2000 to 2010. The story continues. Out of the shadows as Arm enters the 21st century. In the first instalment, we went right back to the beginning, to 1990, and we saw Acorn's groundbreaking processor spun out into advanced risk machines, later to be renamed Arm. And we looked at that company's 10 year journey to establish itself. We looked at how ARM established the whole CPU IP licensing industry and then watched them take that to a successful IPO on the LSE and the NASDAQ. At the end of the 90s, ARM, headquartered here in the Water Building, is poised for the big time. It turned out it was going to be quite an important time for me too. I joined ARM in November 1999 and about three months later, we moved into the building we call ARM1. Arm One was the first building that Arm could call its own, moving out of the shadow of Acorn, and Acorn had been in the water building since before Arm was founded. It was the first building we had where we could all be in one place at one time and we have our name over the door and announce ourselves to the world. Arm at that time had approximately 350 employees. My badge number is 426. In the wake of the IPO and breaking into the FTSE 100, Arm had money to grow and invest, and the market was growing too. In 2001, we passed a significant milestone. Our partners had shipped a cumulative total of one billion processors. That took 11 years. In quarter three of 2008, our partners shipped for the first time a billion units in a single quarter. These days, they ship more than twice that every single month. One of ARM's biggest problems was how to support its fast-growing customer base. So we established a network of partner companies to help with that. Design houses joined the ARM Technology Access Programme and training and education companies joined the approved training center program. There were quite a few acquisitions between 2000 and 2006. Euromips bought in 2000, brought access to the secure core range of processors for use in highly secure smart card applications. Artisan Components in 2004 was by far ARM's largest acquisition to that time. They became our physical IP division. Also in 2004, Axis Design Automation came into the company. They formed the basis of our fast model technology. Kyle Electronic, an industry veteran, came on board in 2005, and the Kyle brand now covers all of our software development tools. In 2006, Norwegian graphic developer company Phalanx came on board and formed the basis of our Mali range of GPU cores. But in the early 2000s, ARM had a very low public profile. It's almost like we were operating in the shadows. At that time, even though ARM was headquartered in Cambridge and had the best part of a thousand employees here, most people in Cambridge had very little idea that we existed. And those that did probably had no idea of what we actually did. Mentioning that you worked for ARM made for very short conversations at parties. People outside Cambridge knew the city for its university, its architecture, and of course, punting. But few knew that a groundbreaking new company was lurking on the southeastern fringe. ARM had a surprisingly low profile, even within the electronics industry. We dealt directly with the companies that licensed our designs and developers that bought processors from the likes of ST or Atmel or Texas Instruments very often had little idea that there was one company behind all of them. Before 2004, Arm was a company that exhibited at other people's events. In that year, we started our own event. Arm developer conference in Santa Clara and invited other people to exhibit at our events. This was almost Arm's coming out party, Arm's opportunity to announce itself to the world and to its customers. 
Up to this point, Arm's phenomenal growth had been largely driven by the mobile phone industry. Mobile phones sold in their millions every year. That meant our products and our architectures and our roadmaps were largely driven by the developers of mobile phones and the processors which they needed. Every year, they wanted a processor that was smaller than last year, faster than last year, used less power than last year, and was cheaper than last year. Quite a tall order for ARM's design teams. That meant we weren't necessarily meeting the needs of some other very large sectors in the electronics industry. Specifically, the users of microcontrollers. They wanted devices that were very small, very cheap, and above all, very easy to use. So in 2004, ARM launched a bit of a broadside on the industry. And with version seven of the architecture, we decided to segment the architecture specifically to answer the needs of other sectors of the industry. That resulted in the Cortex-M3. ARM's first microcontroller core. It was groundbreaking, a real departure from what we'd done previously. Not a guaranteed success, but nowadays, Cortex-M microcontrollers are ubiquitous in the industry. A few years ago, I attended the 50th anniversary edition of the Embedded Systems Conference. And my good friend and industry veteran, Jack Gensel, was asked on stage, what was the biggest breakthrough in the last 50 years? His instant response, the Cortex-M3 microcontroller. 32-bit processing power for under a dollar changed everything. Today, the Cortex-M3 and its descendants represent the bulk of shipments of ARM processors, shipping in excess of 17 billion units every year. As the 2000s drew to a close, ARM had established its position as the largest player in the silicon IP industry. It numbered its customers in the millions, from the largest silicon manufacturers to millions of hobbyist developers the world over. ARM TechCon became ARM Dev Summit, and it spawned daughter events in Europe and Asia. ARM was now known across the world, no longer operating in the shadows. And its next phase of development would be driven by new markets coming across the horizon. The first was the emerging Internet of Things. In response to that, ARM launched a prototyping platform called Embed. It now has an active user community, well over half a million. Behind me, you can see the second. This is one of ARM's data centers, and its hum is the heartbeat of our headquarters. It allows us to develop and deliver complex IP to customers right across the world. But with the emergence of companies like Google and Facebook and Amazon driving the development of what we now call the cloud, this represents another opportunity for ARM, but it would require a wholly different class of processor, one that features in our next installment. <laughs>